Yo, what is up, you guys? Welcome back to Small Talk Sports, episode 11. Can you believe we made it to this point? I know I can. We have a lot to talk about today. If you're a basketball fan, you're in luck because it is the NBA postseason. We have some playing games to discuss. All the playoff games have had at least their game ones played already. It's Sunday night here at the Small Talk Sports set in Los Angeles. So we have a lot to cover. Uh, some predictions because, again, one game really isn't too much in terms of predicting a whole series. And as you'll see with my predictions, some of them are throwaways. Some of them are going to be four-game sweeps, really nothing special. And we also have the Monte Carlo at Monaco, all right, this ATP 1000 tennis tournament. That just happened in the clay. We'll get to that a little later. But I say we jump right into it. How about some playing games? Now, if your favorite team played in a play-in game and it was pretty close, it was probably that Heat versus Raptors game. I apologize. I'm not going to cover all the play-in games. If you know me, if you can see the shirt I'm wearing, sorry to our Spotify and Apple Music listeners, I'm only going to talk about the Lakers playing game because this was an overtime thriller in Los Angeles. This was an epic against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, Harry and I were at the LAFC soccer game. If you follow us on TikTok, you knew that. So we leave the game. We're watching the end of the third and the fourth quarter from a McDonald's waiting for our Uber, which, by the way, took so long for us to catch. Uh, it was very complicated. That can be for another podcast. LeBron James ties up the game with about two minutes to go. He hits a clutch three. Crypto.com Arena. I mean, Staples Center is going crazy. The Timberwolves could not hit a shot at the end of the fourth quarter, but that's no problem for us. LeBron drives to the basket. He dishes it out to Dennis Schroeder. He hits a three. Lakers are up three with 1.4 seconds to go. And that's about it, right? Not much else could go wrong. There's 1.4 seconds left. What, is someone gonna, I don't know, I don't know, foul a player shooting a three-point shot, giving him three free throws for a chance to tie the game? Of course not. Except Anthony Davis did foul Mike Conley with those 1.4 seconds left as he's shooting a three-pointer. And you know Mike Conley clutched it out. We're going to overtime. To kick off overtime, Rui Hachimura hit a clutch three. More on him later. And I'll skip the boring stuff if you're not a Laker fan. Lakers win it. They move on to the playoffs. Anthony Edwards was 3 for 17 for the Timberwolves. I don't want to entirely blame him. Last week's episode, we talked about Rudy Gobert. He was suspended. His presence was not felt. And of course, when you have a three-time defensive player of the year not playing, you're bound to lose the game. It was a lot closer than we all thought. This game was a lot closer than we all expected. Lakers pulled it out. Again, congrats to the Lakers. They move on to the playoffs along with the other playing teams that won. Congratulations to them. Let's get right into the NBA postseason, starting with the East. The three-seed Philadelphia 76ers are up one game to zero games against the six-seed Brooklyn Nets. My prediction, 76ers in four. There's not much else to say. Game one was a 20-point blowout by Philly. We're going to move on to the next one, which is the two-seed Boston Celtics up against the Atlanta Hawks, who are the seven-seed in the East. Celtics are up one game to zero. They are going to sweep the Hawks. Need I say more? Next question. Now, this is an interesting series. It's the five-seed New York Knicks against the four-seed Cleveland Cavaliers. The New York Knicks enjoyed a victory in game one of this series against the Cavs. However, I think that the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to win this series in six games. The Cavs look really good this season, and I think Donovan Mitchell is a playoff player if you've seen him in some past seasons with the Jazz and now he's finally getting a chance to prove himself on a team. Oh, well, I say prove himself. I don't really think he had many doubters going to Cleveland. Very solid young core over there. Unfortunately, they lost to playoff Jalen Brunson and his 27 points. But look, Mitchell dropped 38. I think he's going to have a very solid rest of the season. I do think the rest of the Cavaliers need to step up. But look, they dropped game one. Just a bump in the road. And again, my prediction, Cavs in six. Which brings us to the Miami Heat against the Milwaukee Bucks. Bucks are the one seed, Heat are the eight seed. And the Miami Heat shocked the world and took the first game. Uh, there were some unfortunate injuries. Tyler Hero broke his wrist. He's almost definitely out for the rest of the series. 
Giannis Antetokounmpo injured his back, so after 11 minutes of play, he was taken out of the game not to return. That's a huge reason why the Heat won this game. Uh, X-rays taken on Giannis's back, came back clear, according to head coach Mike Budenholzer. I think the Bucks win this series in five games. I have no doubts. They're going to go pretty far in the playoffs. But playoff Jimmy Butler, he looked great. 35 points, 11 assists. I love the Heat. I love what they've been doing. It just seems like their championship window has closed, especially with this tough task of playing the Milwaukee Bucks, especially in the first round. Maybe next year for Miami, probably not. Let's move over to the Western Conference matchups. Now this next series is the freeway series of Northern California. You have the Sacramento Kings up against the San Francisco-based Golden State Warriors. Uh, Kings are the three seed, Warriors six seed. And the Warriors drop game one to the Kings, which at least surprised me. But after about 17 years of being out of the playoffs, the Kings finally host a playoff game. I don't think Kings fans had a doubt that they were losing this game. This is a special matchup for me because the six seed is where I, as a Laker fan, was hoping that we would end up at the end of this crazy, tumultuous season. But... After watching Darren Fox drop 38 points in his playoff debut with his college teammate and former Laker, Malik Monk, he got 32 off the bench. After seeing these guys go crazy against the defending champions, I am very happy that the Lakers are not playing them in the first round. But again, we'll get to the Lakers later. My bold prediction for this series is not the Sacramento Kings, but it is the Warriors in six games. I think Andrew Wiggins is a key part to this championship team. I know he was last year. He literally just got back, and now he's thrown into the playoff mix. He's going to need some time to gel. Steph Curry played a great game, super solid. He missed the game-winning shot. He had a really easy look. Well, okay, I won't say easy look, but he did have a good look to tie up the game at the end of regulation. He's making that shot nine times out of ten. It was a. If you watch the highlights, it's a little like running three. He was off one foot. He can, he can make that shot in the future. He's going to make that shot in the future. But the Warriors don't win on the road. We've known this the entire season. They're solid at home. They're phenomenal at home. But they just don't win games on the road. Um, I think in the first round, it won't be too much of an issue. They obviously dropped the first game. I think they're going to come back and get the second they're going to be rolling on the road. Maybe, maybe drop another game in Sacramento. I have full faith in the Warriors. Let's move on to the fourth seed Phoenix Suns against the LA Clippers, who are the fifth seed. I'll say it right now. Suns in seven. Clippers just took game one tonight. It was very exciting. There's some special trivia about this series. This is actually the only series in the NBA right now, all of the postseason, where I want both teams to lose. I don't care for either team. If you know me, if you know most Laker fans, we don't like the Suns. We don't like the Clippers. And I personally don't. After what felt like 10 years of a postseason in the NBA without Kawhi Leonard, he picked up right where he left off with 38 points in this Clippers win. Russell Westbrook had an atrocious shooting night. And before we all go for him, before we all make fun of this 3 for 19 shooting night, awful, I think we just have to look at how he played at the end of the fourth quarter. A lot of huge rebounds. He's still a super athletic guy. Big body, 6'3", very muscular. He had the game-winning block on Devin Booker. So where he clearly, clearly lacked in offense, he brought it back on defense. He brought it back with these rebounds. At the other side, if we look at the Phoenix Suns, they have an insane team. Kevin Durant is still there. DeAndre Ayton is now fully healthy. This uh, CP3, Devin Booker, Aiton, and KD, this, I guess, foursome of players, they haven't really had that much time as a crew. Look, the Phoenix Suns are a very special basketball team. They were favorites to win it all before they got Kevin Durant. And as we know, big KD, big Kevin is on the other side. And how are you going to bet against him in the playoffs? The Clippers showed a lot of grit, a lot of grind. We here at Small Talk Sports are huge fans of grit and grind. We are not huge fans of the Clippers, but this is going to be a super fun series to watch. But Suns in seven. That's all I'm saying on that. All right, get ready. This is another quick one. The one seed Denver Nuggets 
surprisingly beat the eight seed Minnesota Timberwolves. They won by 29 points. I don't have anything else to say. The Nuggets are winning this series in four games. So now we can move on to the Los Angeles Lakers. They are the seven seed. They're playing the Grizzlies. And I'm going to tell you why the Los Angeles Lakers are beating the Memphis Grizzlies in five games. Firstly, what did we see from game one? We saw two players not named Anthony Davis and LeBron James combining for 52 points. Those two players, you ask? Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura. Austin Reeves is a baller. Austin Reeves is a king. He did not miss in the fourth quarter. He was five for five with nine points in a row by himself on his back before flexing his muscles and shouting, I'm him. Do you know why he did that? Because it's true. Because Austin Reeves is that guy. Rui Hachimura, he was channeling his 1996 Michael Jordan-esque moves, hitting fadeaways like it was nobody's business. He was 5 for 6 on three-pointers. We were super happy for him. He also led the team in scoring off the bench. He's the only Laker in the history of ever to lead the team in scoring off the bench in the postseason. Austin Reeves had his nine points in a row. The Lakers as a team finished the game on a 15-0 run. I do have to point out the obvious. John Morant, it looked like he broke his arm. I don't think he's coming back for this series. He's definitely not coming back for game two. He said his status is in jeopardy. It looked like a really bad fall. I don't think he's coming back this series, especially not at full health. But this takes me to my final point, and that's maturity. I always talk on this podcast about mature basketball teams, and I always seem to talk on this podcast about how the Memphis Grizzlies are not a mature basketball team. The Lakers, well, they have one of the oldest active players on the court in LeBron James. He's pretty mature, and he's just absolutely killing him. What this Game 1 victory showed is not that LeBron is the GOAT. He is. It's not that Anthony Davis, when healthy, is an absolute monster in the paint, which he is. But it's showing that we have guys deep in our bench, we have guys that you've probably never heard of, who are absolutely wrecking the competition. We have these hoopers, who you didn't know about until yesterday, who you probably didn't know about until you turned on the game and watched on Sunday, who are winning key playoff games for the Lakers. Not just a small market team with their first dip in the postseason. I'm talking one of the biggest franchises on one of the biggest stages of their entire careers. Give me the Lakers in five games. The Grizzlies, I said it once, I'll say it again. How the heck are you talking about dynasties when you haven't won? Whoa, all right. That got a little tense there. Let's let's tone it back. All right, let's dial it down. Let's get into some tennis. All right, it was the Monte Carlo Masters 1000 at Monaco. It's played on a clay court, my favorite surface, as we talked about last week. Actually, I don't know if clay is my favorite surface. We might have to edit that out. But Andre Rublev, he beat Holger Rune for the title. This was Rublev's first Masters 1000 tournament win. He moves to number six in the world. This leads us to our next Masters 1000 tournament, which is going to be the Madrid Open, which, you guessed it, is also on clay. As of Sunday night, things could change, don't take my word for it, but as of Sunday night, our king, the king of the clay, Rafael Nadal, is set to play at the Madrid Open. I seriously cannot wait. If I were in a betting state, if I were a betting man, I would probably put my entire mortgage on Nadal winning this tournament. But again, that is not gambling advice. Do, do not take my word for it. I, we we got to wait until it's a little closer to the tournament to ensure that he's playing but that's how I feel right now. But let's get back to the Monte Carlo Masters. I need to give Andre Rublev his flowers. But Holger Rune, he's a competitor. All right, he did not, well, I, I know he cared, but he did not take this loss too hard against Rublev. There's no beef there. But somewhere where there is beef is this week's Beef of the Week. Now, this beef of the week, if you're a Yankees fan or if you're following baseball, you know that it is one of our more lighthearted beefs of the week. It was the classic bubblegum on the hat prank. Not in the hat, on the hat. One of the Yankees players, I think this is hilarious. You might not, you can skip over this part of the podcast. Someone was chewing gum and they blew up a bubble and they somehow placed it on top of Jonathan's hat, 
on top of their deer pitcher's hat. And it wasn't just that, that you know, chewed up pink piece of gum. It was chewed up with an actual bubble on it, just sitting there on his hat. And the players around him were having fun with it. They're posing for pictures. It's the top of the third inning. You're playing the Minnesota Twins. There's not much to do. So they're taking their pictures. They're laughing. They're having fun. Finally, at the bottom of the third, it was exposed that there was a chewed up piece of bubble gum with a little bubble on it on top of his hat. And he picked it off. He seemed very embarrassed. He seemed a little shaken up. But luckily, nothing too much to burst his bubble. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Unfortunately, we are out of time for this week's episode. But catch us next week. We're going to explore those NBA playoff predictions I made. Hopefully some of them are right. I know I sounded pretty confident saying it. But who knows at the end of the day? Only time will tell. All right. 11 episodes in. I appreciate you so much for being on this journey. I appreciate the support the texts, the reposts, and just the vibes. Just giving me that that good energy to keep this going and keep supporting. It means the world. I am so thankful for your ears. I'm so thankful for your eyes to be watching, listening, however you're consuming this episode. And it's only up from here. I promise you that. Small Talk Sports.